Have you ever been handed a massive data set full of errors and it's just complete chaos? Yeah, well, we've all been there. It can completely derail your day and grind projects to a halt. But stick around because today I'm spilling the tea on how to clean that data using Power Query, which is built right into the Excel you already have. Trust me, this is the ultimate hack you didn't know you needed. Messy Excel data can be a real pain, right? You've got duplicate entries, inconsistent formats, missing values. It's honestly enough to make you wanna chuck your laptop out the window. But before you do that, hold up, because there is a better way. Enter Power Query. This is your new best friend in the world of Excel. This tool can automatically and repeatedly clean your data. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. Stick with me and I'll show you how. And click that link to join my newsletter. If you join, I'll send you my free guide to 25 ways to use AI in finance and accounting, one of which is writing Power Query code. So with that, let's get started on taming messy data in Excel using Power Query. So what is Power Query? Power Query is an incredibly powerful tool to manage data that's built right into the Excel you already have. You may have not even noticed it hiding right there on the data tab in plain sight. There's so many great functions of Power Query. The first is data importation. You can pull in data from multiple different kinds of sources across your computer, across databases, and across the web. You can then transform this data once it's in. You can do things like remove duplicates, you can shift columns around, you can change the type of value, text to number, all kinds of powerful tools. There's data integration. You can take multiple data sets and merge them together, similar to how you would do it in like a SQL query or an access database. Uh, you can also append data together to make larger data sets. A really fantastic feature is that there's automated and repeatable workflows. This means that once you teach Power Query how to handle the data set, it will be able to run those steps with a fresh data set every single time without any intervention from you. There's advanced data shaping. This goes beyond transformation to be allow you to group things together, to do pivots, to unpivot, to repivot, to do all kinds of really complex data analysis right in Excel. There's M code scripting. If you want to be really fancy, Power Query uses a language to code called M, and you're able to do M codes right in the Power Query window to do really complex things with it beyond what even the user interface will let you do. To that point, there's a very user-friendly interface. Unlike a lot of tools like straight coding in SQL or Python, Power Query looks and acts just like Excel, and you'll be used to it right off the bat. And performance. Power Query can handle data so much faster than Excel. And it is incredible at handling large data sets. And the best thing is it does all this work before it pulls the data in. So it doesn't slow down your Excel and it doesn't slow down your computer nearly as much. So now let's hop over to Excel and start walking through how to use Power Query to transform data. So I've got an Excel spreadsheet open here and I'm on the data tab right up here. And as I mentioned, Power Query is hand hanging out right in plain sight in your Excel that you already have. It's this section over here called Get and Transform Data. If you haven't worked with Power Query, you may have never even noticed this. So to get started, we're gonna go to Get Data, and we're gonna get data from a file. So I've got a couple of files that I got from Kaggle. Kaggle is a great resource for data science and machine learning. There are tens of thousands of free data sets you can work with to practice your skills. I highly recommend it, totally free. Download away and practice. So I first have got a CSV file, which I got from Kaggle. This is gonna be a big database of retail sales. It is absolutely massive. It's over 300,000 lines, and it is nothing you would wanna pull in directly to your worksheet. So here's how we open up in Power Query. So you'll see this window, and it's showing you a highlight of this is the data we found, and this is what we're gonna pull in. Um, I don't want to load it yet because what I want to do is take this into Power Query. If I hit load, it would pull it straight into Excel. What I want to do is hit this transform data button and that's going to open up the Power Query window for me. So now we're in the Power Query window. Let me orient you to what we're seeing here. So there's three main columns you need to know. There's home, there's transform, and there's add column. So in home, this is where you can do a lot of the basic data management. You can do things like choosing columns. You can keep rows, remove rows. You can do some grouping. You can change the data type. And as we'll look at in a bit, you can merge or append queries right here to adjust your data. On the transform column, some of the same functions from the first one. You'll see group is still here. You can do a lot of work with detecting the type. 
you can pivot so you can pivot in or out of a pivot table you can take specific columns you can put them up um, very useful there you can do math in here so a lot of times we like to do our reports in thousands or millions instead of whole values and you can do all of that math right here and apply that to a column and then of course if you go to add a column you can just like in a pivot table you can pull in additional columns you can create calculations so if I custom column it would allow me to do this window and just Put it in. I will note that the formulas are different in Power Query. We're not going to cover that in full today, but if you go down to learn about Power Query formulas, Microsoft has some great resources right here for you. So now that we've looked at the functionality available in Power Query, let's start working with this data set so we can get it into Excel where we need it. You see, this is again a massive data set. There's over 300,000 rows. They won't all load in here because Power Query is trying to make sure you can work with the data in the fastest and most efficient way possible. So the very first thing we're going to do is we want to select Power Query and we want to remove anything that's blank because there could be some data in here that is incomplete. So we're going to go down here, we're going to go to remove rows and we're going to remove blank rows. So now you'll see over here under query settings, when I did that, it added a step. This is the power of being able to save and rerun your Power Query because it's gonna save everything I do. And if you ever need to update this, you can connect to a new data set and it will run all of the steps you've set. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to wanna to pull in a mapping table, okay? So this is very similar to how we would use VLOOKUP, except it's a lot more powerful because it will give you the data set already looked up. So here's how we're gonna do this. So first of all, I wanna to go to a new query and I wanna add a new source. I have this saved as an Excel workbook. So we're gonna go here, we have this mapping table and I'm gonna pull that in the same way that I pulled in the raw data set. In this scenario, let's say that we're a salesperson, we have some key accounts across the business and we only wanna look at the data for the key accounts. So you'll see as an example, clothing Nike is a key account. This is really important. You'll notice that it did not pull in the headers. So I'm gonna come up here and there's this button to say use first row as headers. I'm gonna click that and it's gonna pop it right up for me. And you'll see it's also, again, tracking the steps over here because it can track across multiple data sources, all of the different things you wanna do. So now I've got the key accounts. You'll see this is organized. I've got the category and the vendor. Going back to retail data, I don't have a field that's category and vendor. Right? I have a field that is the category and I have a field that is the vendor, but I don't have those together. So to merge this together, I need a column that matches. So I'm gonna add a new column that will let me do that. So now what we need to do is add a column. So I'm gonna go to custom column and I'm gonna create a concatenate function very similar to what I would do in Excel. So what I need to combine together is this product category over here with product brand right here. And again, the formulas are a little bit different so we're gonna go equals product category. We're gonna do an and. You put in a space with using quotes, just like you would do in Excel. We'll do another and, and then we will select product brand. Hit okay, and look at that. There's a column that we can now merge. So now how do we merge? Well, we're gonna go back to home and we're gonna click this merge queries button. I'm gonna merge queries, just merge queries. If I do new, it'll create a totally new query. I just wanna add my mapping table into this existing file I'm working with. So we'll hit merge queries. Now you select the column that is the same between the two that you wanna match. So I'm gonna come over to my new custom column. I'm gonna select the mapping table. I'm gonna select the one that matches. I'm gonna do a left outer. This means that I'm gonna keep all of the rows from the retail data set, whatever is on top here is considered left, whatever's on the bottom is considered right, and I don't wanna use fuzzy matching because I know that these data sets match. Fuzzy matching will allow you to look kind of how VLOOKUP at one or negative one where it will look for something close, fuzzy matching does the same thing. So we'll hit okay, and it's gonna pull it in. Now you'll notice when it first pulls it in, it just says table, so we need to go over and expand this. I already have category vendor in, that's what I used to match. I just wanna open key account. We'll hit okay. And now we've just pulled in the data set. You'll see some of them are marked key account if they are a key account, otherwise it just says null. This will become very important for our next step. So now that we've mapped the key accounts, we're gonna go through and filter out everything that's not a key account because we don't need it in the data set. This is as easy as clicking the dropdown, unchecking null, and the data set is filtered just to key accounts. 
Now to that same point, I don't need all of these columns in here for what I'm gonna do. I really wanna know the name of my customers, where they're from, and what they purchased and how much they purchased it for. I don't need all of these individual columns when I load them to Excel to work with it. So to do that, we go to group by. And in here, I always use the advanced because it allows me to pull in multiple columns. So I'm gonna go in advance and I'm gonna go through and select which columns do I want. I don't need any of the IDs. I really want their name. I want their email so I can send them an email. I don't need a lot of the demographic information. I do wanna know the total amount of their purchase. And then I wanna know what types of products they bought. And that's really all I need to know. I don't need all of this other data in here. All right, then we're gonna come down here. We're gonna create a new value column. We want the operation to be a sum, and it is gonna be a sum of total amount. Which reminds me, you don't wanna put the value field up here. We wanna only put the value fields down here. This just needs to be all of the different text and descriptive fields. So with that, we will hit OK, and we will let Power Query do its magic. So you'll see this cycle for a little bit, and then we'll have a brand new data set where everything is grouped together, much smaller, much more manageable with just what we selected, and Power Query has automatically summed everything for us. And again, if you get a new customer data set and you want to rerun this, Power Query has saved all of your steps over here under Applied Steps. If you ever want to go back and adjust a step, we'll look at Filtered Rows, for instance. And we previously did just key account. This is where you can come back and you can make any changes you want. Just hit the gear icon next to any of your steps. You can edit them without having to go back and recreate the entire wheel. So now that we have our data set, we want to load it. There's a couple of different options. You come up to close and load two. And there's a few things you can do. So if you want to work with Power Pivot, which I will cover in a different video, make sure to check Add This Data to the Data Model. This creates an offline database that Power Pivot can pull from, just like you would normally pivot off of an Excel spreadsheet table. You can do this off of a Power Pivot data model. So make sure to check that. Now, if you want to keep your Excel workbook really light and you're not emailing the file to anybody, I recommend selecting only create connection. This will query the data sets every time that you want to work with Power Query or work with the data in Power Pivot. It will not load it to your workbook. It keeps it a lot smaller and more agile. Now, of course, if you're going to have to email this out to anybody, let's assume we need to email this to the sales team, you will want to load it to your workbook. Otherwise, they won't be able to see or access the data. So in this case, we're going to click table. We're going to hit OK, and our brand new data set is going to load. You'll see over here on the right the queries and connections pane. This is part of Power Query and Power Pivot. It's currently querying the data. It's pulling it all in for us, and it's setting it up. So you'll see Power Query pulled in all of our data. Here we have the mapping table that pulled in for your reference of what is or is not a key account. And here's our new retail data. Now you'll remember that originally I said this was over 300,000 lines. With all of the data transformation we've applied, it's down to just over 100,000. And most importantly, instead of being 30 columns across, it's now six columns across. A lot easier to manage. And then from here, you would do the normal steps. You could turn this into a pivot table, insert pivot table. Let's pop this on sheet one because we already have it. And then you could pull it in just like you normally would. Right, so I'm gonna just put in the names. I'm gonna say for product categories, I really just want clothing. Here's everyone who bought from me. And here's how much they spent all there, ready to go, because you've created this very concise, very clean data set. Don't forget that Power Query will always save your steps and it will always save your original data set. So if something isn't quite right, you can go back to Power Query, change the steps, it will reference the original data set and it will give you a new output. And now I promised you a bonus tip and this is truly life-changing. Power Query can't just pull from databases or Excel. It can also pull from PDFs, pull the text right out of them, and it can pull from the web. So I'm gonna use an example. Let's say for this sales business, we wanna look at how Walmart is performing because Walmart's our biggest competitor. So we're gonna go back to Power Query. You'll remember we go to the Data tab, Get Data, and we're gonna get data from a PDF. It's just right here. All right, and I have the earnings release for Walmart saved down. I'm gonna import that. And now Power Query is gonna go through and it's gonna scan the entire PDF for us. 
So the way this works is it's by page. So what I want to do is I want to come down and look for the page that has their financial performance. So here it is. So here is their financial performance for the last three months ended. I'm going to hit transform data because what I want to do here is clean this up a little bit and pull out some of the noise. All right, so there's these null columns I want to remove. So I'm going to remove this column. I'm going to remove this column. We're going to clean this up. Okay, and there's our data set. So this now is exactly what Walmart made, pulled into Excel. I'm going to hit close and load. I want to add it to the data model. I also want to add a new worksheet. And now I've got Walmart's performance, and I can quickly compare that right over, came out of a PDF into Excel. This is an incredible feature, especially if you look at stocks, where all of the major companies are releasing usually in PDFs, and only a few nice ones that like us give us Excel files. So in today's video, we looked at Power Query and using it to tame messy data sets. This is the absolute go-to tool for cleaning Excel data. It is easy to set up and use. It's already in Excel. It functions like Excel and looks like the tool that you've probably been using for years. And most importantly, you can automate your data cleansing process to save time and effort in the future. Truly powerful. If you found this guide helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more Excel hacks and finance tips. We post a new video every Monday. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below. I read every single one. Until next time, I'm Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers. Mm -hmm.